In this demonstration I'm going to show you our Simply Postcode lookup example for Angular. Here I am in Visual Studio and I've opened our example code. And you can see how I've got the normal structure and if I drill down into the app folder we should see here we've got a series of services and components um, written for Angular. Now how this project really works is it has a service which manages uh, the searching of the postcode and storing of various other things. So the first step to uh, achieve is to go to our website and um, let's just pop our website up here. And at the top here you can sign up for a trial. Now that gives you one postcode area and when we talk about postcode areas we're talking about the first two letters of a postcode. So if I lived in PE for instance, PE132QL, I could select the PE area as my demonstration postcode. Um, and once I open that account that will send me a data key which we'll see in a second. Now the data key identifies my account and looks up any appropriate licenses. Uh, I've got to apply to that account. Obviously, I purchase any of the credit packs or user, user licenses. Uh, and that's how we identify your account. So the first step is basically to open an account. Uh, it's instant process. Even if you buy credit packs, it's instant access. And you need to drill down into this service here, SPL Postcode Search Service, and pop the data key in here to identify your account. So once I've done that, I'm ready to run the project. And I think what we'll do is first we'll demonstrate the functionality uh, by starting our web server. Uh, that will build our Angular project and open our web browser. Okay, so that's just popped up. And I've just rearranged the browser so it fits on the right-hand side of the screen here. But here you can see uh, we basically enter a postcode, press search, and it's going to write the address back to a series of fields on in our uh, Anglia form. So I'm just going to pop in a postcode here and press search and as long as I've got a license it will return um, my postcode and as you can see I can select it and press the select button or I can simply double click on a line and it will select the line. If there was an error it would actually display it here postcode not found and such and as we see the code later it may be worth removing that in a production environment because you don't really want to sit the end users possibly to see the license information um, displayed. So if we just double click on a, a line you can see there it's filled in the address and now the user's got the ability to still edit that address if it doesn't exist or something slightly wrong with it. Uh, here's another postcode and this one's actually got some um, company names in there so it's filled in the company name as well as the, the full address. Uh, depending on your environment, you may not want the company name, in which case you might have taken that off. Of course, you could reprogram this so this doesn't disappear. You could use a different um, UI slightly. I use the list box because uh, it's sort of mobile friendly um, and uh, works quite nicely. So before I walk through the code, let's have a look at the kind of structure of this project. Let's move this over here. I've got a, a PowerPoint sort of diagram which is actually on the website um, I think it's above this video if, uh, if it's placed where it is at present uh, effect effectively we've got a large container we've got two sections here so you can see this is class UI section which is actually a component called address UI selection which kind of encapsulates this whole um, search and address display and then within there we've got this search box here which um, is SPL search within the components which then having search then shows LSPL SP select list and then that gets displayed in address UI component and this is all as I explained sort of driven by a service uh, which these various components call to do the selection and uh, remembering of various IDs etc. So let's just go through that again. That's this section here, the address UI section. And then we've got SPL search. So this is portion here, SPL search, which then displays SPL search, SP select list, which is this section here. You select from the list and it re-enables the address dash UI component. So having said that, let's, uh, let's start probably at the top. Um, 
which I believe in Angular is index HTTP. So there's the root of my um, components. So obviously that drills down. So we've just got here a header and then we've got the app UI section. So that sort of encompasses um, this bit here. And then as we saw in the diagram, we're kind of at this red border here. And then we've got the subcomponents below in the app address UI section. And I'm just going to close all those windows down as we drill down. So this is our UI section. Let's have a look at the, uh, let's just resize that a second. There's the HTML component. So there you can see we've got the search and then we've got the list component and the UI component. And what that's doing is it's got an ng if here. So basically if this Boolean value is true or false, then it shows the uh, appropriate section. If you remember, um, get back to the browser, it high, basically toggles those two sections on and off. So that's what the ng if is doing there. And if we look at the TypeScript behind that, you can see here we're uh, we're registering an SPL uh, service, which is uh, this here, this SPL postcode dash search service, which does all the grunt work, and we're declaring a subscription. So what we're doing is setting up a boolean value and a subscription, and we're initializing it to false, and then we're setting up a subscription to monitor if the service changes that value which we'll see why it changes the value in uh, as we drill through the project. So that's our UI section. That's the top level. So let's go now into the actual search component. So I think if you remember, um, that's basically a search box followed by a box, uh, sorry, a button to do the search. So that's uh, encapsulated in SPL header. And then we've got a form control. That's the class. It's a form form control. And by the way, all the styles are in the style sheets, obviously. Um, then we've got a label and we've got a text box here. Uh, and then what we're doing is we're binding that to a string um, variable in our TypeScript called postcode entered. So that's bound. So when we enter a value there, it's reflected in the TypeScript in um, that string there. And on click, it then calls a submit um, function. And also here we've got um, error text. So there's a section here we haven't actually seen because we didn't create an error. But that shows any errors in red just uh, down here. And like I say, you may want to remove that in the production environment because as long as you've got an enabled license, everything should be happy. Let's go and have a look at the TypeScript. So again, we're uh, importing the service and declaring a subscription to monitor any changes in a variable, which we're doing down here in the constructor. So we're monitoring here any changes in the error text. So if the service wants to display any error text, it reflects in the UI. We're also bringing in a, um, an address rec type and an address record, which I think we initialize in a TypeScript file. We'll just have a look at that in a second. Um, and there's our on submit here. So basically we're calling the service and saying search for postcode and it's this, the postcode entered, uh, which we, we talked about was mapped and um, before. So let's just talk about these two records here, these two address records. Obviously you need somewhere to store the address searched for or if the user enters an address or slightly modifies it, we obviously need to store it. So effectively we've got an address type record. So we've got an address type rec and address record here. Let's just view that. So there's our address record type. So we've basically got company, three lines, town, co county, postcode and country, which is effectively what the postcode lookup returns which is directly mapped to the UI here. So this is what we're seeing here. And of course, we're initializing that as um, an address record. So as I say in here, we've got the address record um, to pass around. So that's the search side. So having pressed the search button, we're obviously calling the submit 
which is then doing this SPL service and its search for postcode. So let's talk about the service. So as we talked about before, we've got the data key defined here. And again, we've got the address rec. We bring that in. So basically, these are all sharing that address record. So that's brought into the module and there's our error text. We haven't talked about selection lines. We'll talk about that in a second. And we've got various um, functions here to um, subscribe to the observables, which are the um, which are uh, error text and um, the lines basically display and various other bits. We'll come to that in a minute. So we do a search for postcode, pa passing the postcode. And that really initializes a few values. So something selected is nothing. The currently selected ID is nothing and passes that back to the UI by just telling Angular to update anything that it needs to update. And then it calls get list. So we're going to subscribe to that. And we're basically saying here, return the data to this procedure, this function here. And if there's an error, return it to here, which updates the error text and tells Angular to update the UI. So let's have a look at the postcode search. So that effectively gets the data back from the API call. Oh, hang on, sorry, we missed a step here. Uh, we should be looking at get list really first, shouldn't we? So get list basically creates a URL to our web service. So it's calling simply postcode admin lookup. There's various um, parameters here, which we don't really need to discuss as such. Uh, we're basically passing the data key and the postcode. Everything else should always remain the same. And that calls the service. It actually only does it in a couple of lines. And as we discussed a few seconds ago, we've got the response here is returned. So this is passing the data if we get a response. Now the record returned has a found value, which is either zero or one. So if it's zero, there must be an error message to display. So therefore we're setting the uh, error response to display and telling Angular to update the user interface. Um, so that would be something like the license wasn't found or some problem with the license. Uh, if one is returned, everything's OK. But if the record count is zero, then basically you haven't found a postcode. So maybe you want to um, fold up the search and display postcode not found. Uh, if they're successful, we just log uh, the records found and the license status to the console. Um, and then we uh, reset the error to zero, just in case there was an error. And we update uh, the lines in the UI and show search list. So what this does, I think, is it toggles that Boolean value we saw earlier, which is making the decision. Oh, no, sorry, it doesn't toggle it. It sets it to true or false. So we're hiding it there and we're setting it to true. So that's the bit that actually makes this appear. And the update UI line is actually putting the data, the records returned, into um, into selection lines. So this is an array of uh, addresses. Let's just have a look at those. So here we are on our website looking at the JSON full address um, line um, page. And this is showing you how this um, call is made up and the data it returns. So here is an example. Look, I said it one tells you there that something was found and there's your record count seven records and it returns an array of records um, each line has an id and a l value which is basically the line to show so we're going to display that in our list box ready for the user to select which i believe if we go back to our browser is where we are right now so let's have a look at the list component. So let's remove that. Let's have a look at, let's just close everything but this. And let's go to the list component. So we should see in the HTML there, we've basically got a list box with an ng4, which says let records of selection lines. So basically it's going through that selection lines we were just talking about. We we're returning that array of records. There we go. Array of records gets passed into selection lines, which is the, um, sorry, I moved it off the screen, which is this array here. 
so uh, our HTML is basically going through each one of those lines and call it each record record and we're setting the value uh, of each line to select to record ID and it was displaying the L value or the line value of each record in the list box which is uh, I believe current state we've got here now when we select that we um, fire off a selection uh, changed event which we'll go to in a minute um, we'll, we'll have a look at this TypeScript for this component but I'll go back to the service because basically it then calls um, selection changed and that just remembers the ID. So basically we're remembering the ID the user has currently selected here. And we're also saying selected something equals true. And we're telling Angular that that value is updated. So therefore anything bound to that through the UI will change. Hence, when we look back at the HTML, we've got here an if uh, statement based on that value, which either... Um, uses the class SPL button or appends the class button disabled. So if it's false, button disabled hides it. Uh, if it's true, then uh, it, it gets, it's basically enabled. I think it's just basically hidden. If the user presses the button or double clicks, then it calls selected item. And uh, so selected item is then called in here in the, in the, in the appropriate bit of um, TypeScript, which again calls the selected item in the service. And there's the selection change one there that we just talked about. So selected item then goes back to the TypeScript and selected item says, well, okay, is that uh, that ID value should be contained? This I can't think of a reason why it wouldn't, but it just checks. And if it is contained, then it basically calls get address and it subscribes to the result. So this is all a synchronous, a synchronous call. And again, it now creates a URL to call the web service, the JSON web service, passing the data key and the selected ID to get the actual physical address of the line selected. So Angular, when it's returned the data, it then calls a get address record response, which is down below, um, which then says, you know, is, is found one, which it should be because we've already validated the license because we've made one call to the web service. But we're just checking there. So if it returns true, then basically we're getting back a data record from our server, which again is documented a bit further down here. See there, we're calling it with the ID and it returns all this information just here. So then what we're doing here is we're just popping that all into that address record. So now we're storing the address information and um, we're saying set show list false. So it's going to hide that list. So basically it's going to toggle from the list display, which I think we're currently at here. So if we press select, it toggles the list box to be hidden and updates the UI um, with the address information because it's written that to address record as we'll see in a minute that's bound to the address rec which we discussed was imported earlier so let's look at the address UI which is pretty easy to understand because all it is is a list of fields and we're using the ng model to bind um, that address rec to the UI. So Angular is doing all the work there. As soon as those values change, Angular is going to display them. I'll just go into the TypeScript. So again, we're importing address rec, address rec type, and everything's bound nicely to the UI. And job's done. Like I say, you can customize this. This could be restyled. Um, to your heart's content. Anyway, I hope that uh, walkthrough um, completes really the help needed for you to uh, pop this sort of implementation into your own project. Thank you very much for watching.